What's the answer? What did the Holy Ghost tell you? I want you to tell them what the Holy Ghost says. Subli sublimate your passions. Is that what you do? Don't you need a wife? And you got a beautiful wife? He said, look, he said, yesterday jokingly, he said, he said, I told him, jokingly, I said, look, you know, Islam allows me up to four. I said, up to four. Though I have only one. But Islam allows me up to four. So he said, you see, I am allowed. Christianity, he said, allows me only one. And, you know, I have chosen the best. I take off my hat. Congratulations. He was teasing my wife and I just before we came on and said, Islam allows four wives. He just corrected me, said, up to four. I said, well, <clears throat> Mr. D. Dot, Christianity only allows us one, so I had to get the best on the first shot. <clears throat> But you have solved one woman's problem. There are 7.8 million. Not only 7.8 if every man got married, but your, your, your gay population of New York. One third are gays, sodomites. One third out of the... If it was every man could get married, there will still be one million women in New York alone. But one third of your New York population is gay, sodomites, or maloot. You see, your culture, your civilization has created beautiful words, prostituted beautiful words for filthy, dirty things. These sodomites, catamites and sodomites, you call them gay. The first time when I started you know, reading this in the newspapers, gay, I was getting confused. What is gay? <laughs> By God, look, I'm not pretending acting. I'm not a very learned man like most of you, you see. I passed through that elementary stage of education. I've been talking, talking, so I talked myself into this position of talking. That's all. Academic, academically, oh, m most of you, you know, you're far beyond me. But I knew this word gay from childhood, from school. They taught me a poetry at school. My teachers, poetry. It says, gentle lords and ladies, gay, on the mountain dawns the day. And I, I was rhyming that. <laughs> gay. We used to call people, he's happy and gay. He's happy and gay. No, no. no. So that is, I mean, this is a very jovial person, whether men or women. She's happy and gay. Man is happy and gay. I thought, nothing. But now they're talking about gay. So what is gay? You know, it seems something suspicious about the way things they're writing about gay. Gay. Now I know that's for sodomites. You use such a beautiful word, throwing it away. Now, if I told our chairman is happy and gay. What do you take me for? Where did you get that? I said, no. When I used to go to school, you know, it was beautiful. Oh, God, I said, look, no more. Then God Almighty punishes them with AIDS. What a beautiful word, AIDS, for acquired immune deficiency syndrome. Nice. Then they reduce it to AID, filthy, dirty disease. God Almighty is, you know, punishing you for it, but no. You see, you haven't got the answers. Islam gives you the answer to your problem. It says, marry women of your choice by twos and threes and fours. But if you cannot do justice between them, marry only one. And there is a type of man who doesn't mind taking on extra responsibility. And there is a type of woman who doesn't mind sharing a husband. But your law won't allow that. They don't mind. You'll be getting a dozen illegitimate children every year. That they don't mind. You are a stud. Then you are a stud. They call you a stud. But if you lawfully said, look, I'll look after both these women and the children, offspring, I'm prepared to be responsible. I said, no, you go to jail. You can plant your wild oats as you like, but don't marry. Sodomy, legalized. Lesbianism, legalized. But when it comes to lawful marriage, natural. Polygamy is natural. You say, oh, my dead body, go to jail. And I said, this is an answer to your problem. You won't listen, then you simmer in your soup. You see, soon after the war, the Second World War, I read a news item in my local paper, Dateline from London. 
say we are in close contact with Britain because we are English speaking people. It was, South Africa was a colony of Britain. So we are in close contact. Almost so many news we get from there, Dateline from Germany or from there, but mostly from London. And I'm reading a small headline, very small. It said, 5,000 misfits to be shipped to America. And you know the human mind is so imaginative. That when I'm reading that, it conjures up a mental picture that these misfits must be cripples or people with hair lip and club foot that, you know, the British people, they, have, they are not so advanced in my mind as, as, uh, as the, uh, the American in, in the field of medicine, so they must be sending them for treatment. You know, your hair lips and your club foot, sending them for treatment. That's the immediate picture of 5,000 misfits to be shipped to America. But when I read further, it says that these 5,000 misfits were the offsprings at that time, they said of Negro soldiers stationed in England during the war. They said Negro soldiers. I mean no insult to my Afro-American brothers or my black brothers, but that was written then. 5,000, these are the offsprings of Negro soldiers stationed in England during the war. So I'm asking the question, this was on the west coast of England. I said, how many black soldiers were there compared to the white Australian, the white New Zealander, the white South African, the white Canadian, the white American, the white Free French, the white Poles, and your own British soldiers? Compared to all that, how many blacks were there? Negligible. Then soldiers, before they go, they're training, they're told, to use prophylactics, you know, birth control, you must not avoid getting infected with VD, with gonorrhea, right. And then we also know that every arrow doesn't hit the mark, nor is every prayer granted. What amount of mischief was done in Christian England to produce those 5,000 misfits during the period of the war? What amount? Can you imagine? They have all. These children of our Negro brethren were too dark to be absorbed into English society. You see, if you had your sister bringing such a brat in the house and the child, girl or boy, is growing with a crinkly hair and with a little stump nose and, you know, a little high cheekbone, he says, everybody coming along and says, who's this? He says, my sister Mary's child. Who's this? He says, my sister Mary's child. How do you feel? Your sister Mary's child. So, how does it come about? You know, we are white. See, Caucasian, you see, your, your, father, your mother is white, your father is white, everybody is white, and where did you get this? So I said, well, you know, some Negro fellow, my sister must have gone out with him, you know, and produced this. Ooh, stinking. So I said, look, let us send them to America to be absorbed into Negro society. So they shipped them to America. I don't know, I don't want to take names. You know, many of our, some of our leading men in America might be one of those 5,000. We don't know. But can you see? The answer. I said, you have a surplus. Four million more women in England than men. Four million more women than men on the East Coast alone. He says 1.6 million more women than men on the East Coast of England. What do you do with them? Pickle them, send them to Tibet. They're running short of women. Send them there. What? I says, no, there is a type of man who does not mind taking on extra responsibility. I saw it on your program here. I was in Canada. And from across the border, from Buffalo or somewhere, there was a program being beamed in all directions, also to Canada in the hotel, I switched it on, and I see a program about polygamy. And there was a man there, he said, I got eight wives. He was an ex-Mormon. He was um, excommunicated. The Mormons at one time, they allowed polygamy, unlimited polygamy. Joseph Smith and Brigham Young had many wives. So now, because of the force, pressures from the other groups, he said, <laughs> you Mormon, how many wives have you got? <laughs> you Mormon, how many? so they threw away. No more. But this Mormon, and he was telling, he gave a figure, a startling figure, about now. He said, 20,000 Mormons have been excommunicated for having more than one wife. They have them. They can't register them, but they have more than one wife. 20,000 Mormons. This man, he said, I've got eight wives. And they're all happy with me. And none of them were married before. None of them. They were not virgins, but they were none married before. Then in the, from the audience, live audience, you see, one nice, plumpy, middle-aged woman, she stands up and says, look, what about me? He says, you too, give me your address, I'll recontact you. <laughs> you see, you ask those women who have got no husbands, there would be about 20 million 
who are in the marriage market, 20 million in the marriage market, at least who are hungry for husbands. And they are hunting for men in New York. I mean, they are hunting for men. And the men are becoming shy and becoming gays. <laughs> you know, before coming here, I started, I left home, I think on the 16th of uh, November, no, October, October, Pakistan, Dubai, Abu Dhabi, Sharjah, Al Ain, and here. And I have been telling my people there, I said, you people, don't be fools, man. Running to Bombay, running to Beirut, running to London. What for? I said, go to New York. Try and help them to solve the problem. <laughs> bring, 